Obakar's father said we would see something supernatural tonight. I don't know if this is supernatural, but it's a real fight, certainly exceeding the expectations of most of us. And though we're less than halfway into the bout, already your mind wanders to the subject of a possible decision. There's a core of opinion among cynics in the sport, reinforced by the scoring in Deloia Whitaker and Deloia Quarte, that Oscar has a hard time losing a decision. But what if Obakar clearly wins several rounds? It's not out of the question. Yeah, but Oscar has gotten out there and tried to fight and win every fight he's been into, so you don't want to label him that kind of guy. This guy's a winner. As he proved in the 12th round against yeah, Quarte. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't had any gift, even right now, when he could be boxing and moving. His corner has not even told him to do much to about moving. He's still out there trying to win. Call him the golden boy, but he's no soft touch. I like Obercar's fight. He's been able to just touch him every now and then. Nothing hard, just touch him. Then he periodically lands some power to keep Oscar honest. Oscar standing around waiting for one shot. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating to watch him fight this way, George. Yeah, it looked like an old plotter or something. I mean, this is a guy who has boxing skills, yeah. immense boxing skills. And it, you just wonder why a fighter with all that craft built up over the years would renounce his boxing skills to try to fight as a slugger. You never know what happened. When, but when you have a corner and you can't listen, boy, that's not much else you have. Obercar staying right with his strategy. Takes a few left jabs here and there. Stays with it. Car for the most part busier than De La Hoya. Wobbled through the first round, survived the knockdown, probably fell behind by two points on every scorecard, but since then has been able to execute his plan. He just touches Oscar, touches his gloves every now and then. Touch here, touch there, just to keep Oscar starting all over again. Every time he touches his hand, Oscar has to start all over. De La Hoya with a cobra-like left-hand counter in there. matchup with Felix Trinidad. Obakar has landed a number of low blows this fight, but they've been really borderline low blows. Most of them, none of them down in Tierras del Fuego like that. Uh, none of them have seemed to have bothered De La Hoya especially. You can see his protector just beneath the white on top of his trunks. But it doesn't protect you. <laughs> Believe me. You'll have to be singing some high notes on those. Of course, along about now, people are going to start to try to compare you got a person De La Hoya's fight with Obacar and Trinidad's fight with Obacar. Trinidad stopping Carr in eight rounds, just as they compared the two fighters in their fights against Whitaker. First round, Oscar De La Hoya starts to bounce a little bit in his feet. I don't know what kind of shoes You've he has. always felt like he's most effective when he bounces, George. He Why gets a couple of bounces, and he's got his rhythm. He can do anything. Harold, how do you have it halfway through? <laughs> Jim, in rounds, I got it all even three to three, but Oscar De La Hoya winning a fight by one point, 57-56 on a 10-point must system due to the knockdown. Jim, I got to tell you, in that last round, I didn't see Oscar De La Hoya doing a thing. And I'll be honest with you, I really believe he's not moving inside because he got headbutted in the first round, and he's nervous about getting headbutted again. Steele didn't see it in the first round, but boy, he got headbutted. <laughs>
Carr working with the left hand, Carr's setting up the occasional job. right. He's, he is out boxing champion Oscar De La Hoya right now. Goes left and he goes right. He catches Oscar waiting and he hits him. Never too hard. In the last round, De La Hoya threw only 40 punches. With wow. blood, blood streaming Time from the left, the left eye of De La Hoya, perhaps on a butt. One point. One point here, but hey, Now, wait a minute. What's going on here? He's taking a point yeah. away for a headbutt? Yeah, and intentional. He called it intentional. He called that an intentional headbutt? He did indeed. So referee Richard Steele removes another point from Oba Carr to go with the point that he almost certainly lost on the knockdown in the first round. And now an angry De La Hoya comes back. De La Hoya trying to land the one big left hook that would punish Carr for the butt. When you do that, you end up getting buttered again. You gotta keep you cool. Yesterday, Gil Clancy, advisor to De La Hoya's trainer Robert Alcazar, told us that he would go to referee Richard Steele, intentionally bald, to point out that intentionally bald Obakar might use his head as a butting weapon. Yeah, but I would prefer a guy bald to butt me than a guy with hair because that's where the scratches get in. You can a string of hair kind of slides up. I still want to see the replay to see whether it looked deliberate. Deloia landing a good counter left hook inside, and Deloia bouncing and more active than has been the case before. Carr lands a right hand on the swollen cheek and another one. It's the bounce in his legs. Keep the bounce, Oscar. Obercar should just keep moving, keep moving, land a shot here and there, and keep moving. Make certain they don't stop this fight. The bleeding and the swelling will be below Oscar's left eye, so they should not interfere with his vision. But if they happen to stop this fight because of the butt, one point, no blue. He loses it. And now Richard Steele removes another point from Obercar for low blows. So Carr has lost two penalty points in this round. Obercar has better reali realize if he want to win this fight, he better get a knockout. Time. All right, let's take a look first. Larry, here's your look at the butt. You wanted to see what Richard Steele called an intentional butt. Let's take a look as they come in at close quarters. Both fighters have been aggressive. Now, that is not a deliberate butt. I don't know if the rules say you can take a point away for that, but that is not a deliberate butt. It's a damaging one, but maybe not deliberate. Harold, what do you think? Okay, here's, the, here's what happened. Stop using that word deliberate. He called an accidental headbutt. Oscar De La Hoya was cut under the left eye by an accidental headbutt. Richard Steele does not have to take away a point on an accidental headbutt. But he did. But he did, okay? He took away one point. Why? That, because Oscar De La Hoya suffered a cut. It was an accidental butt. Steele may have said that, hey, uh, Carboard butted him enough in this fight. Another accidental headbutt caused the, uh, the cut, so he took away a point. But it, it wasn't intentional. Intentionally takes away two points. Now, what this means is if that if the fight gets stopped because of that cut, we go to the scorecards. Yeah, okay, we all understand that, Harold, but why is Richard Steele once again imposing himself on a championship fight by calling that, that accidental butt a foul? La Larry, there is... Forget it. Because of the damage that was done is apparently Harold's point there. But it's not interfering with the fight. It's not. De La Hoya is fighting his fight. It's the blood is not going into his eye. No, you know, it was an accidental butt, period. And so there will be something else to debate in Richard Steele's ongoing dossier of memorable ring decisions. He's the man, of course, who stopped Chavez Taylor with two seconds to go in the fight, and Chavez, having lost on two scorecards, made him the victor by TKO. A lot of people thought that was the right decision. Then several months later, he stopped the fight between Mike Tyson and Ray Ru Razor Ruddock. Most people thought that was a premature stoppage, and from that moment forward, Steele has been booed every time he's been introduced as the referee of a major bout here. You know, everybody's entitled to make mistakes. I've never brought 